been very, very good so far. Please, can we once again get applause all the way around the room? We'll be cheering. I want to say, Sean Patrick! Hello. Don't spoil it for yourself. Some people call me the space cowboy. Some call me the gangster of love. Between you and me, I think they're taking the piss. <laughs> have we got, have we got any clinically obese Chinese Geordies in tonight? <laughs> Never get to use that material. <laughs> Newcastle, of course, home to an enormous Chinese community. In fact, apart from Smith, the second most common surname in the city is the Cantonese name Yi, which is spelt Y-I. And I know what some of you are thinking, you're looking at me and thinking, I bet he used to be clinically obese. And it's funny you should think that because I used to be clinically obese. Now I'm on a seahorse diet. When I see horses, I eat them. And I've, I've lost a lot of weight. Because horses are actually very difficult to catch. <laughs> also, also, there aren't many horses in South East London. <laughs> Especially now I've started eating them. Lovely to be here, surrounded by happy people, because until recently, when show business put these wings on my heels and this smile on my face, <laughs> I, was, I was stuck in an office all day, every day, hanging on the telephone, listening to people whinging and complaining, on and on and on. Always the same at the Samaritans. <laughs> Only joking, ha ha ha. I was actually a public sector accountant but that's not always as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> and some people say to me, it's quite a leap, Sean, from public sector accountant to high octane cabaret entertainer. <laughs> how, how have you made that work? I say there's actually quite a few transferable skills. For example, in both jobs, you spend a lot of time wishing you were dead and hating everyone. <laughs> and of course, the main downside of being an accountant we have this reputation of being a bit boring and fuddy-duddy. Are there any other accountants in the room tonight? Are you? Are you no. <laughs> Finance professionals? Economic students? I'll be honest, at this stage, I'll settle for an Avon representative or a bookmaker. <laughs> we, we have this reputation of being a bit boring and fuddy-duddy, and these don't help. These are, these are my reading glasses. Basically the same as my Glastonbury glasses, but much smaller and closer to London. <laughs> and I've, I'm actually considering getting laser eye surgery because, yes, it's risky, yes, it's expensive, but every time I imagine myself finally, finally able to burn holes in things with my brand new laser eyes, I can't help but feel excited. So we have this... Thank you. <laughs> I have this reputation of being a bit boring and fuddy-duddy. I was in the office once and I said to a young woman, can I just borrow your pen quickly? <laughs> she said, that's a bit boring and fuddy-duddy. Why don't you use an iPad like everyone else? <laughs> I said, they're not as good for an emergency tracheotomy. <laughs> give, give me the pen, please. Um, I've decided to make it as a stand-up comedian. I'm here tonight. I've decided to make it or die trying. Admittedly, at the moment, the second option is looking more likely. So I, I, I work hard. I go and watch uh, top comedians perform to try and gain even more stage presence and charisma. And some of these, some of these top comedians, your, your, your McIntyres, your Pam Ayres, have... <laughs> So much stage charisma, so much presence. When they walk on, they just lift one hand in the air and wave like this, and the entire room erupts into laughter. Still working on that one. <laughs> I think my problem is I'm, I'm more comfortable with facts. I've, I've only ever failed one exam in my life, which was my um, GCSE in physical education. 
Not the practical, judgmental. It was, um, it was actually the written paper. There was one question on the paper. It said, there is a strong correlation between success in field athletics and dyslexia. Discus. <laughs> uh, I know all sorts of facts about all sorts of things. You're, you're probably aware you're never more than six feet away from a rat. And I think that more than anything is what's always put me off skydiving. <laughs> and um, another, another fact you may not be familiar with, did you know if you were to collect up every single receipt issued on Oxford Street on a single Saturday afternoon, you collected them all up and laid them all end to end, you'd be sectioned under the Mental Health Act. <laughs> but um, when, I've, when I've discussed my act with people, the main consensus is I, I should tell more jokes. So, um, strap in. <laughs> What's the difference between catching your neighbours having sex, catching your neighbours having a threesome? My ex-wife. <laughs> As I now call her, my new neighbour. <laughs> I actually told my mother my ex is dead. It seemed to make things simpler somehow. And also I thought, if we ever get back together, what a lovely surprise for both of them. <laughs> Currently staying at a friend's house on his uh, sofa bed. It's one of those old-fashioned sofa beds where it's a sofa, and then you turn it into a bed by throwing a quilt on it. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm not very good with women. I um, never know what to say to them. Quite often, I will see a pretty lady, far too pretty for me, and a voice in my head will say, ask her out, Sean. What have you got to lose? The answer is always the same. Hope. <laughs> uh, of course, I don't make things easy for myself because uh, I'm actually quite choosy about my ladies. I like my women. And I like my whiskey. Teachers. <laughs> Preferably called Glenn something or other. So I've been working on a new chat up line. Which I'd like to practice tonight. You'll do. <laughs> How much does a polar bear weigh? 400 kilos. Will you go out with me? <laughs> Put you down as a maybe. Before we start going steady, I should warn you, I'm um, quite a worrier. I worry about all sorts of things. Or about the social inequalities in India, where some families are too poor to eat every day. Some tigers can afford Kellogg's breakfast cereals. <laughs> and I worry about whether Tom Cruise will ever come out as homosexual. Because if he doesn't, it's such a waste of a surname. <laughs> One for the gays there. <laughs> Before I leave, and I will leave. <laughs> when I'm ready. I'd like to leave you, if I may, with a few um, sayings or mottos, really, that have seen me through some of the tough times in life. First one, any, any other single men in the room? You're exactly the same as me. Sorry for your loss. <laughs> this is a piece of advice my grandfather gave me when I was a boy. He used to say, Sean, women are like buses. Very difficult to get on if you've got a pushchair with you. <laughs> true. <laughs> Next one, quite simply, quite simply, the immortal words of the great Tupac, not to be sold separately. <laughs> and um, I'll leave you with this. This one's actually more of a warning, because they say, don't they, if you love someone, let them go. Apparently that doesn't apply to mountaineering accidents. <laughs> My name's Sean Patrick. Thank you for having me. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>